Describe the Night is a Russian historical drama spanning from 1920 to modern times. During the early communist era, Isaac, a writer whose story threads the entirety of the play, visits the home of Nikolai, his old friend from the war, and Nikolai's wife, Yevgenia. I have never told a lie ever. I categorically deny the accusation. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Wait, do you want cakes? No, thank you. You don't like cakes? I like cakes. Yevgenia, bring cakes! My wife. Yevgenia! She sits in there all day reading like a mouse. Nikolai, I do not need any cakes. I assure you, I'm... Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yevgenia, this is my old friend from the war in Poland. I've told you of him. Isaac Babo. Stories and poems and screenplays. My husband speaks of you often. I do not speak of him often. Forgive me, not often, but he does speak of you. He speaks of you with great fondness. No, I do not. Madam, I am enchanted to meet you. I will fetch the cakes. I will get them. I must do everything around this miserable house. So you wrote a film? Yes. What is that like? It's remarkable, you know, to see your own deepest notions come alive across the screen. That seems rather terrifying, actually. My experience, that which is terrifying can be thrilling. I suppose, yes. I've always wondered what it might be like to be in a film. Well then, let's arrange it. You could be in my film. <laughs> Do you? No. Nikolai! Nikolai, don't you think so? What? Yevgenia should act in my film. <laughs> yes, that's good. That's perfect. You could. You could. But I'm not an actress. Nikolai, you've told me yourself, haven't you? Your wife is very talented. She's okay. Let us cast you then. A starlet of the silver screen. Don't be silly. Babel. Wives are not actresses. Wives are wives. Isaac Babel, are you married? Yes. What? You married? When? Nine years ago. Nine years? You, you never told me that. You never told me you were married. You didn't invite me to your wedding? Dear. No. Is this? One of your stupid lies again? I am afraid I am married. Why wouldn't you tell me you were married? It's not something I talk about. She lives in Paris and... Your wife lives in Paris? Yes. I live here, in Moscow. What? Why does your wife live in Paris? Yevgenia, have you ever been to Paris? No. no. Well, Paris is... Nikolai, in Paris, there are no rules. My God. Yes, once you've been, you'll, you never want to leave, so she stayed. She's happier in Paris. And I'm happier that she's in Paris. Oh. Well, I understand that. Nikolai, many actresses are married, and, and so they're both wives and actresses. And all I'm saying is Evgenia could be both, too. That's quite enough. My husband is right. I am a wife. Besides, no actress is just cast in a role simply because the, the writer feels like it. I mean... Actors audition. Ah, oh, you see? There are certain regulations one must follow to achieve acting. Then audition. For me, right now. I'll tell you what to say and you can perform it. Yes! Do this! This is perfect! That's foolishness, plain and simple. I'm going to leave you gentlemen to your jokes and wine. Yevgenia, you don't leave this room. You audition. This is good fun. Writer mischief is what it seems like, but fine. Excellent. Go on. You play Daria. Uh, you are speaking with Gashbar, a man with a briefcase with something very important inside of it. You need the briefcase, but you can't let him know that, and so you're trying to be charming. Also, 
you're in love with him. And he loves you too, but you don't know that yet. What a character! What's in the suitcase? Uh, information. About what? About who you are. Daria has amnesia and she's trying to figure out who she is. Fine. Go. Gashpar is sitting on a park bench near a lake in Odessa. You walk to him. Wonderful. Wonderful. Go. There used to be more ducks in this lake. There used to be more ducks in this lake. Oh, that's very good. That's excellent. But I heard they were all killed. But I heard they were all killed. At which point Gashpar says, Madam, they were not killed. They just flew away. And then she says, how lovely to think so. How lovely to think so. And Gashbar replies, not as lovely as your eyes. Is that what he says? That's his line. A little hackneyed, isn't it? No, it's the style of the piece. And then she sits and she says to him, do you have information for me? Do you have information for me? And he replies, I do. And then she says, you remind me of someone who I've known forever. You remind me of someone who I've known forever. And then he says, I am the man who has known you forever. I am the man who you have seen since you first opened your eyes. Look at me. Look at me and remember. And then she looks at him and says, I remember. It's challenging. I'm struggling. Nikolai, you be Gashbar. What? No. No, just pretend I'm Gashbar. You're doing very well. Nikki, please be Gashbar. Never mind. Uh, let, let's go back. Um, Nikolai, you say those ducks weren't killed, they just flew away. They, they weren't killed, they just flew away. And then you say, no, the ducks were lined up and executed. Each one of them shot in the back of their duck heads. What kind of rubbish is this? Nikki, hush. No, the ducks were lined up and executed. Each one of them shot in the back of their duck heads. By other duck gangsters. By other duck gangsters. What kind of rubbish is this? The duck gangsters rule this town of Odessa. And they have either killed the other ducks or put them to work in illegal black markets, which is why the price of eggs is so high. Also, because the ducks have arrested all the chickens. But then Gashpar says, but those are chicken eggs. And then she says, That's too many words. Never mind. Then he says, don't I know you? Say it, Nikolai. Don't I know you? And she says, you don't know me but I know you. You don't know me, but I know you. And he says, don't talk about ducks. There are no more ducks. Don't talk about ducks. There are no more ducks. Ducks. She reaches into her coat pocket and takes out a baby duck. What? This is bullshit. Nothing you're saying makes any sense. This is bullshit. You're not making sense. Nikki. No, 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 no. I told you, nothing subversive. Darling, this is not subversive. Oh, you don't even know what the word means, Yevgenia. It means against the rules. Exactly. Th that's exactly what it means. And I told you, nothing subversive. There is nothing subversive about a duck. Gangster ducks are subversive. But not baby ducks. Not baby ducks, Nikolai. You listen to me, you fool. I am trying to warn you that the world is about to change. Why can't you see? See what? The future? Yes! 
Couldn't Yevgenia tell us about the future? Couldn't she tell us what will happen? What? Yevgenia, you can see the future, can't you? What nonsense. How do you know about that? You told me. I told you what? The night we met. I remember the night we met. Of course you do. Doubtful. I take care to forget things that are useless. Too much memory makes a man weak. It was some starry night in Poland, outside of Zdemir. It was chilly, but not too cold, although we could see our breath, or maybe we were smoking. But I had stolen some wine from a cathedral, and we drank it together. And you showed me Venus in the eastern sky, and told me of your wife, whom you loved. And she could tell the future, he said. She can read men's fortunes. Yevgenia, would you read my fortune? Nikolai is telling me that I must worry about my future, but I hate worrying. Please, tell me if I can relieve myself of this weary task. I think there has been enough games for one night. Nikolai, don't you think this is a good idea? She only predicts war. Nikki, don't be silly. I've predicted many things. I predicted your promotion, your glorious career, your long life. Which you've had. And the... Many children we were have that will happen. Fine. Do his fortune. Excellent. It, it's too much pressure now, I don't know. Oh, now she's timid. No, too late. Do this. Well. There are many ways to tell a person's fortune. I can read your furrowed brow, or the root of your hair, or your palm. Here, let me see your hand. No, no, no. Do the one with the water and the, the blindfolds. That's the one that works. Nikki, that's rather involved. But that's the one that works. Fine. I will perform a Baltic saltwater forearm scrub. What is that? It's a measurement of fate, mostly forgotten or disregarded. It requires materials. I will get them. I will get them. This is not that complicated. Maybe Paris would be a better place for a man like you. Not me. I'm a Russian man. As you said, there are no rules in Paris, and you're not a man who loves rules. Why do you say to me the things you said to me? Are you mad? Do you understand what he can do to you? Yasov brought me here tonight because he cares about me. You don't know him. He comes home stained with blood. Every day I make sure his uniform is pressed and cleaned. You don't know what goes on out there. You're just a writer. Do you like that I'm a writer? I don't care. Have you ever stood on the edge of a cliff where one step forward would send you hurtling down to your death? I live in Moscow, so no. I don't care about movies, or you writing, or being in movies, or carrying on about someone else's eyes, or what they might look like. I don't care about being in love. Or ducks. Baby ducks. <laughs> Let's set up this table. I will sit here, across from me, Isaac and Nikki there. We sit together, we put on blindfolds. Uh, I'm not wearing a blindfold. You have to for it to work. I'm not wearing a blindfold. You have to. Why? It's the rules. Isaac, roll up your sleeves past your elbows. Now I will blindfold myself, and you will blindfold yourself, and I will wash your forearms, and I will tell you your future. Ah. Oh. 
Everything is black. Nothing but war ahead. You only have three years to live. <laughs>